This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 642 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And I am the only one on this show that has never in his life been employed by the WWE. You'll find out why in a second. Uh, of course, we do have the one with the future Endeavor letter from the WWE that normally joins us. He is Mad Mike up in Poughkeepsie. Welcome Poughkeepsie. everyone to the meet. We wait. No, no, we're just oh, doing a regular a show, one. right? That's a different one. Regular yeah, show. Regular. Yeah. Regular show. Regular show. Regular, regular show. show. We're all good. How you doing, Mike? Um, disclaimer. Disclaimer right now. First, Becky Lynch is God. Secondly, <laughs> if you are not caught up with Lucha Underground Season 4 and you wish to do so in the calendar year, stop, shut your ears right now because we're about to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. So, five, four, three, two. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> yeah, yes. All right. <laughs> And that's because, once again, as happens on this show, we have back with us uh, the co-executive producer of Lucha Underground, good friend of the show, Krista Joseph, joining us. Yo, what's up, man? I'm so I'm so excited to be with you guys, talk to you about some Lucha. We have some crazy stuff to talk about, and uh, yeah, let's let's do it. Yes, always raising the bar over there. Holy crap. Uh, we'll get right into it, but at first, let's do uh, some quick, quick business. You can check out everything, of course, starting at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can subscribe to the podcast. You can drop us an email address at that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, just like the shirt says. It's available over on uh, WhatAManeuver.net and ProWrestlingTees.com. And um, you can drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Uh, hit us up on the Wrestling Mayhem Show page and group. The page is where we stream from, and, and, that, and we're streaming from a whole, dump, uh, a whole bunch of places these days. But if you're checking us out live, uh, we are actually have opened the chat room for the Facebook Live, so please go check that out to join us and be part of that conversation and of course the wrestling man show uh facebook group is where a lot of discussion is happening and sometimes special requests like i put out today um and of course you can join <laughs> us here on those live streams and every tuesday at 9 p.m eastern time um also you can uh support us oh, oh hey real quick a quick shout out to our friends on the west coast that are uh supporting us and carrying the uh, the stream on the 405media.com, they're carrying us every uh, every night, seven days a week at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern, so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem. Thank you to our friends that are supporting the show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You can contribute to if you uh, if you if you uh, uh, get any value, get get a lot of fun out of this show. Uh, you can, thanks to our fan of the show, one dollar level friends, Bo Diggity. Woo! Sorry, I turned him down. <laughs> there he is. Um, Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. Our friends at the Pocky Club, five dollar level, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Ponder of the uh, Tiny Shutter Podcast. And I know I saw him in the other chat room earlier today. Our friend at the ten dollar Pizza Club level, Billy F. and Johnson. Again, you guys can help us literally keep the uh, the lights on here in the studio at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. So let's get into it. We got we got the man here. We have so many questions, and I'm just gonna let Mike rip on it. Well, I, again, I, I just finished Ultimate Lucha Four because life happened, and and I, I had to slam through the last few episodes here, mm -hmm. um, like mere hours ago. I'm still kind of like I, I got little bits and pieces thanks to social media in advance, but man, that was an incredible um, last. I guess well, I'm thinking without commercials, half hour for me of Lucha Underground for this season. Oh, I, I, 
I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, Mike. <laughs> anyway. Oh, doctor. Um. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> Fuck. I don't even know. Why is there a creepy doll following us on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, honestly, I, that, that Twitter just kind of uh, came about itself. So I, it's probably Rosa actually controlling that Twitter. I have no idea. Who's, I, who's I apparently there. angered the doll because I use naughty language. Oh, that, that's probably a bad I, idea. I'm, a, I'm well aware. Is there anything I can do? Uh, probably not. Uh, yeah, you're probably doomed. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. By any chance did you pick up any? Are you sure there's nothing <laughs> I can do? Hey, where'd you get that gauntlet? <laughs> it was hidden in time, Sorg. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> okay, that was that was my bit. I had to get out. No, of the no, there, there, there is nothing you can do. Uh, chances are, did you pick up any photographs uh, of a mysterious island at any point uh, that magically got out of the trash can and back onto a desk? Um, come to think of it, yes. Yeah, there's chances you might end up with a doll at some point that could possess somebody, maybe someone in your family. Oh, you know? all right. Just uh, your mom, anybody, you never know. Uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, oh, shit. Okay, all right, anyway, that, that's that's something for future Mike to worry about. <laughs> or past I'm not, Mike. I'm not your grandmother. Yeah. I'm a god. <laughs> <laughs> If I see anyone's eyes glow white, I'll yeah. either it and it's not Jeff Hardy, I'll just run. Yes. I'll just good start idea. running. All right. Um good decision. So all right. Oh, wow. All right. So I have to start with the one with the thing that kind of turned a corner for me this season of Lucha. Okay. That whole fight between Katrina and Melissa Santos. I by the way, I yes. think is my favorite part of the entire season. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, that is, well, you know, uh, I, I realized that this season kind of started slow. We had to move some pieces in and, and, and create some things. Uh, uh, we've had, we had some issues with some talent, some travel, some visas, everything. So some things got shuffled around. And, uh, uh, but that was something that we kind of always planned to do. Um, going back to, uh, Ultima Lucha, is it Trace? The one when, when did the Katrina and Ivelisse fight one on one? I think it was Ultima. That was, Lucha, that Trace. was Trace, yeah. Yeah. Um. One of the like original ideas we had, we had always imagined like an awesome like fight with Katrina and Ivelisse that took place like throughout the temple and it was all shot cinematically like a vignette. And uh, you know, when the time came to kind of put the season together, we we still kind of. Uh, we we had we had an idea for that, and then when we had kind of Evelise and Katrina crossing paths, we're like, oh, or not Evelise, sorry, Katrina and uh, Melissa, Melissa crossing paths. Uh, you know, we thought, God, what would be better than watching uh, Melissa and Katrina fight for like ten minutes throughout the <laughs> ten? Like, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Like a, a, a badass fight, and, and let's let's uh, see what happens. In the meantime, we tied in like. A bunch of cool stories, uh, you know, all intertwined within that crazy battle. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if you were following my live tweets when that was going on. I did a thread of about 13 tweets just describing the entire scene. <laughs> and <laughs> I, to think any, I, I think I remember those. Yeah, and to anyone looking on the outside, they would have no fucking idea what I was talking about. <laughs> but it, it was balls out ridiculous. Like, you guys had time travel in there. You had like just so much. This, stuff. this, this like, is definitely the most timey whiny whiny of seasons. Yeah, it's uh, it was a little crazy. And, and if you even look at episode four, and, and also in episode one, when when bef like right after Katrina leaves Phoenix, and the same thing is like right after Antonio leaves uh, Dario in the casket. Uh, there's like a white flash, like a flicker and a flash and a mm -hmm. sound effect. Uh, it's Aerostar. So, so if you go back and watch the <laughs> other, other oh. dudes, you'll see the same flash happens that happens later. So basically, yeah, Aerostar is there anyway. It was not oh, just a clever that's... transition. Oh, no, not a clever transition. It's 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 uh, Aerostar's light time traveling. 
Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little fun thing that we did, and, and uh, uh, yeah, it's cool. Oh, that that's that, that's fucking great. I I love that there's an actual time travel aspect on this show. Oh, there, <laughs> uh, I want to roll back the Katrina thing before I forget about it because yeah. I remember a discussion we had when that came up, Mike. Um, mm-hmm. because this was this was like something like the first fifteen minutes of an episode that this happened. Um. Was there any inspiration of that fight with They Live? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I think we pull from all sorts of things with the inspiration okay. of the fight. Skip, who directed it, uh, was like salivating when we kind of mentioned that we're going to have this fight and just, you know, the amount of work and, and blocking and things like that that went into the fight mm-hmm. was was really amazing. I mean, Carly and, and Melissa, they, gosh, I think they were there maybe two days doing that. And, uh, you know, I think it turned out pretty awesome. Yeah, because Sorg saw a lot of They Live. I saw a lot of, like, the first Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's a mixture of anything, like, uh, you know, some great action sequences, like, you know, them walking across the bridge, like, kind of there's, like, a bridge thing when it's shot from underneath and they're fighting on it. Uh, you know, it's a, it, it was just, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, okay, uh, so, so Mill and Katrina's Temple, do we know how Melissa found it? Um, I believe that it they set up their their uh, shrine uh, mm-hmm. wherever that wherever they are. So it's somewhere in the actual oh, okay. temple. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. I, I was concerned about that because I'm like, did like Melissa suddenly develop like reincarnated Katrina? GPS or something, or did she so like? No, I guess I just okay. imagine it as being in a dark, horrible corner of the of the. Uh, of the gotcha. I think, so kind of I, I think there's a middle story that we're missing here, like and <laughs> okay. where 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 I I am imagining just like like Lucha Underground Moving Day, <laughs> where mm-hmm. everybody's coming from the dark corners that they they resided in the old temple and they had to find a new dark corner in in the first town ta- and the next temple. And, you know, yep. and it's like, you know, Katrina's like saying, hey, this is a nice face for us. But it's like, you know, you got to shoot Vinny uh, out of the way that's eating pizza in the corner. You know, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I, I just, you know, it's in my mind. That's I, how mean, it goes. I mean, true. I mean, Vinny does go to weird places with pizza. So chances are, yeah, he probably has walked in there and had a slice. Yeah. You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, maybe he prayed to that, like, uh, Santa Morte skeleton behind him and, and he offered right. it a slice of pepperoni. Yes, I mean, I, and 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 a side note from that hashtag justice for Vinny uh, hashtag nothing wrong with pineapple. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. So there's a lot wrong with pineapple on pizza, sort. Um. Hey, all right. God, so the, the gods, uh, the gods didn't mind it. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Didn't they take the pizza with them, or did they just take the pizza guy? I can't remember. I think they took uh, the, the pizza. I think they took the pizza too. Um. <laughs> all right. So so while we're on the topic that okay um the sacrifice to the gods yeah now was that just like an availability thing for a lot of guys or at least in my head canon someone is going to lead a zombie army <laughs> like yeah, they'll I, all be brought back i can't confirm or deny that of I, course I, okay. I, I can say that that idea kind of came about just uh in season three actually towards the end like uh, you know, just talking it w- with the other writers, uh, just saying like, Hey, like I just was thinking, what if like Matanza had this, uh, had like a, you know, they were, they were getting rid of some, we, we couldn't have as many vignettes this season because of mm-hmm. some budget cuts. Right. So I was trying to think of a way to have a shoot. We're trying to think of a way to like, have a short segment, uh, that could be cool. And that was kind of the original idea. One idea we had was to do with no ropes and that became problematic. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it pretty much just became kind of like a, a lighting change and then, uh, you know, a, a, a lights out lights on the guy is gone. So yeah, it was kind of cool. A way to kind of build Matanza back up and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, create some, kind of in some intrigue hopefully with it. it it was it was fun like the, the, when the crowd started getting into it and they were like chanting for a sacrifice you oh, know they loved it they, they really I, I don't i don't think that even the tv uh, did it justice because the people loved the sacrifice live they, they they went nuts for it well it's it's like the first time almost really that the live crowd gets to see some of the 
craziness that is the story. Yeah, that was cool. Like the supernatural element came into the temple this time, which was which was a new kind of wrinkle on it. Ah, uh, okay. So so there still might be a zombie army somewhere. You never know. Okay, never and especially know. I mean, especially with what happened to Matanza, like all the people he sacrificed, like. <laughs> I mean, there's so many ways that we can go with it. <laughs> oh, they're just gonna have to wait and see. I, I still can't believe you guys pulled a full on Kano. I can't believe that. <laughs> I love it was Kano. Great. A full yeah. on Kano, a full on pet cemetery. Uh yeah. it, there was a lot happening there. Like yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> All right. So, oh, we did, we, did Indiana, we did an Indiana Jones tribute too. In, in yes, you did. Yes, I, you did. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can you confirm or deny? Was that just his way of making a backdoor pilot for a Boone the Bounty Hunter TV show? No, that was actually kind of <laughs> so. So Vibra got injured. Oh, okay. We were supposed okay. to have a big Atomicos match, and we we're trying to figure out ways to like make everything work together without. Do, we're doing the least amount of damage to everything else that we had planned out. And that was just kind of like hanging out, being like, hey, so what if we did like an Indiana Jones like ripoff where he goes into the snake temple and kills Vibra and there's a casket in there and it's Jeremiah's casket. Uh, you know, everybody's, you know, if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. And then, uh, yeah, and have Taya cut his head off. Uh, well, yeah, we thought that was fun. So. And Johnny loved it, especially we get we got the you know an actual kind of like Indiana Jones style hat, and uh, you know I, I thought it was great. It was oh yeah, fun. I'm surprised he didn't pull out a bullwhip. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was just wait or like a knockoff, like dun da da da. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying our best uh, to to do it without getting sued or anything like that. But I, well, yeah, I think it was cool. my fa- my favorite line of the whole thing. Uh, uh, I, uh, is a Chris Roach line, and I think he put like uh, uh, they, that Cobra Moon and Daga were at this. Uh, wait well, you know they find out that there's really no no snakes ball or something like that, like a snakes ball or a reptile ball or something like that. So <laughs> Cobra Moon and Daga were convinced that, that there was a reptile ball, and they they they, they left their, their their desert home or wherever it was. Oh, oh, I got yeah, some. I got. I got a. I'd love to see the fake invitation to that. Oh, the serpent's ball. <laughs> the serpent's ball. <laughs> the serpent's ball. There's some. Uh, find out no serpent's ball. There's some comments from the chat room here. I want to make sure. Uh, first, uh, Bobby F. J. Towns with us uh, from Jonestown. Oh, and, Bobby. <laughs> and he wants to know what room of the temple you're in, and if Drago is there again. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I am in. Uh, in the writer's room. No. Yes. <laughs> um, but Drago is not there. I wish he was here, though, because he's like my favorite person ever. But Absolutely. yeah, he's not, unfortunately. Uh, Alex Miller, uh, who's uh, from your neck of the woods out there, I think, uh, he's asking if there's any Ultima Lucha posters because uh, he'd love the Hell is War poster. I, I feel like we, uh, they were floating around a little bit. Like, weren't they up yeah. on the shop for I a think- bit? I, I think they might still be up there. There's some small posters. I think there's a Hello War poster. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know if they did season four posters for Ultima Lucha, but uh, who knows? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, we, we need to talk about um, Dario. Okay, let's talk about Dario. I love Dario. Um, so... so so, uh, how how do I even start with Dario? Like, so when so when Aerostar goes to revive him, okay, yep. Aerostar is back before the season essentially starts, right? Correct, correct. Do we know if Aerostar jumps forward, or is this a Days of Dario past situation going on? <laughs> I think uh, you'll have to wait to see what happens in a future season if we do that. I wish I could answer oh, for what will you, happen. Do you have a I, I, I don't want to give it away. No, I mean I, I I prefer either he could bring him back, he could bring him to the future to the end, or maybe there's another storyline that happens with Dario during all of that time. I think is interesting too. But uh, just or do we get like just a a Days of Temples past? Where everybody, yeah, or, everybody's or wearing like, ever, or or does everything change and everything that you thought you knew 
is not anymore. I think I think there's <laughs> think, there's lot there's lots of ways to go. Because I I have so many theory. Like another theory of mine is that okay. is that Dario somehow put in the idea of Antonio's head that Matanza could sacrifice people to the gods, and really Dario was just running in and kidnapping these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till he turn the light switch off, run in and grab him. Yeah, yeah, come with me. <laughs> Cortez Castro, I know you're a cop, but we got to get out of here. Because it seems like the more people Matanza sacrificed, it almost seems like he got a little bit weaker. <laughs> oh, that, that's interesting. Like, because, because, like, uh, Joey Wrestling got in way more offense than anyone had before. And Matanza had sacrificed a lot of people at that point. Mm-hmm. Then. Aya beat the crap out of Matanza, and then Johnny, well, obviously Johnny beat the crap. Granted, he had a giant gauntlet of the gods to help, but... Oh, you should have held it up. Yeah. Oh, I, I already put it there. It, it's it's oh. actually, <laughs> actually quite heavy. Heavy is the hand. <laughs> but, yeah, that, like that's one of my running theories that maybe Dario's been working in the scenes the whole time, and he's going to lead, like, an army against all of the God-infected wrestlers now. It's a very good possibility. Who knows? Uh, okay. Oh, and Alex is bringing up um, the uh, Lucha Underground crate, courtesy of Lucha Loot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I got one, yeah. I got one. Cool. He got one, too. What'd um, you get? Uh, you get a Lucha air freshener. Oh, nice. Which yeah. is probably oh, in my car. Oh, does it smell nice? Is it new car scent? Is it vanilla? What is uh, it? It actually smells like death. <laughs> <laughs> every time you go to the car, you yeah. You every don't know. time it's just like, oh, someone was sacrificed in here. See, I was just it hoping should, it, should, it should smell like violence. I, I was hoping <laughs> it would just smell like uh, you know, a, a warehouse in Boyle Heights. That, that smells like cat piss. Ah, uh, yeah, crazy. yeah. Okay, okay. So you <laughs> yeah. can at least you can simulate that. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, they they gave they also gave us a poster, um, a sticker. And a uh, an exclusive shirt, which is that it's really cool. What's the exclusive shirt have on it? Oh God, it it's like um, Lucha Underground established 2014. Oh. It's a really cool shirt. Cool. Nice. Yeah, I think I, I wore it somewhere. Oh, Bobby yeah. said it smells like Vinny's Pizza. <laughs> Perfect. Cat piss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to take a moment here. We'll talk more about cat piss and uh, try to get, see if we can uh, get some more answers out of uh, Chris here in a moment. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to give a shout out uh, to uh, some other stuff going on over at IndieWrestling.us. You might like this, Chris. So we do a little show over there called uh, uh, Do- Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories, where our friends uh, Duke Davis and Shirley Doe uh, okay, just... Re- one that grew up with ECW and one that was like there and has interacted and, and wrestled a lot of these guys uh, 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 recount the good old days, right? Well, they, they set up a challenge this week uh, when I was recording, and I, I can't say no to this because if this happens, I, I can't I can't hate this. Uh, if we get to 200 subscribers on the IndieWrestling.us network, which is uh, uh, $5.99 a month, uh, seven-day free trial you can try out right now at www.IndieWrestling.network, uh, we are going to attempt to book Kimona Wanalea uh, on the show. And the only guest that we're seeking out of the ECW era here. So that is, I guess that's a promotion uh, of sorts that we're doing here. Uh, so go check it out. We got a lot of stuff going on over there. Including come up this week is a brand new promotion. It's uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Young Guys promotion for Rise Wrestling. Rise with a Y. Uprise. Uh, about halfway through the editing now, that'll be up on the network as far as our friends at, as well as our friends at Black Diamond Wrestling. Um, and a few other promotions will be coming up here in the next couple of months. Um, all the eight episodes of Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories. More on the way and actually we're recording a brand new concept um, that might look slightly familiar uh, this week that, uh, that, that'll that be coming up for you guys. All kinds of content, including PWO TV from Cleveland. Uh, the good old early days uh, just posted stuff with Gregory Iron, Matt Cross, which kind of resembles this guy on Lucha Underground, uh, Johnny Gargano, Josh Pro- Prohibition, and so much more. Go check that out over there. Again, www.indywrestling.network. And if you go to indywrestling.us, uh, as I speak, the IWC winner-takes-all show with David Arquette 
is rendering the full show right now and should be up by the morning for you guys that have pre-ordered over there on uh, the VOD over on Vimeo. So go check all that out starting at IndieWrestling.us and make sure you're supporting Indie Wrestling. All right, so coming back to Lucha Underground here uh, again, it was a, it was, it was a kind of a, it was a, it was a fantastic vibe. I, the one thing I noticed, Chris, was I, I love the, because um, I don't think we talked to you since the beginning of the season, right? No, um, we haven't. I did like that that you felt, it felt more confined in that set too, like it I, was. <laughs> I, I know, yeah, because I mean, you guys were able to like use the space in kind of different ways. Than the other set, because and I know from from being there, like it was very wide open on one end, uh, mm-hmm. in the in the former warehouse. Um, you know, now that the season you know is, is out there and everything, you know, what were what were some some of the, you know, what kind of changed your thinking as far as shooting in a space like that? Well, we had to do lots of ch- ch- changing of thinking. Um, well, first of all, uh, I guess the big thing is that room that we were in, where, where the that was just a giant old freezer, gigantic. Mm. Freezer. Um, so we we in order to even feel make it feel a little bit open up, they cut we cut a giant section of concrete and and freezer material and all sorts of old crap that's probably been in there since god knows when that building was built uh and we cut a big hole in it um and then we just kind of started to talk about things we'd like to do so we put the catwalk around it we thought that might be interesting uh, for people to kind of fight around and jump off of uh and then kind of just built the sets from there and uh uh this uh, kelly van patter who designs all our sets and things like that kind of uh kind of ran with it and we kind of ran with the theme. You now what you don't see is there's another freezer like right next door. And basically what made it easier than the other temple was we just built all the sets in one big giant room. So it was a humongous freezer. So it was easier for us to like in the old temple, you'd have to go to the gym, then you'd have to go to Matanza's cell, which is in a whole different side of the building. So it made it easier to have everything in the same location. We could light things faster. We could move the crew faster. We could mm-hmm. we could rotate through things faster. So like the rabbit the rabbit tribe layer, the the rabbits uh, wait uh, their little waiting room, the um, you know the locker room, the co- the, the 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 Dario's office, the, the office that you see. Um, the difference is the office that you see in the new set. Is just you just go in and there's nothing in there. So we built a separate office. We built a separate office uh, in this in this same building. And then you know there's the, the snake layer and uh, yeah every every set was contained in one area. So it was a little different because it felt like you know it it did feel like the old one had a consistency of you know you walk through that door that's the office you walk through like oh there's the hallway where they always shoot people walking up which went yeah. to the gym which you know went to the, the creepy bathroom yeah, like, and like, you know. <laughs> someone through the window in dario's office he landed in dario yeah and that was not we did not have we did not have the capability there to do to do that kind of thing so instead we we were we had to work around some things but Mm -hmm. uh yeah i think it turned out okay is that also why antonio's office was a little scaled down from what dario's was what the inside yeah, I don't think you even saw the, the hole inside because there's a lot of details inside that office okay. that like that like you might not have seen. Like, there's all sorts of like um, uh, archaeological, like ancient things and stuff like that 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 we have all set up throughout there. There's like the digging tools and stuff like that. So like, oh, kind okay. of you know, Antonio was kind of into like finding out like you know into the past and the kind of the, the mythology and stuff like that so okay cool yeah all right um so we tied up a lot of stories oh yeah um now what was the one what was the storyline you were kind of most excited to tie up oh gosh um the one that was most excited to tie up gosh uh, probably the 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 formation of the gods and the gods and to be basically it's a tie up but at the same time it's to begin the gods versus the tribes and and I think uh, that was the most exciting thing so the very end of Ultima Lucha 
uh, you know, we kind of been waiting for that and the reveal of the Lord and, and all this stuff. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's been kind of something that, that, that we've been waiting for, for a very, very, very long time. So, uh, what was, you know, I mean, that's something since season one, we've, we've been waiting for, I think maybe season two is the first time you saw the limo. Um, but yeah, that was it. Because my dog's growling in the background. He's got a ball. He was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, was was the Lord the guy you always had in mind for, it, or was that well, like? The... Well, I'll tell you the story about behind that. So, uh, you know, there was all there was a we always wanted it to be somebody really crazy or cool. Like, I mean, I, I think at one point, at one point in the very beginning stages, we had talked about it being Roddy Piper. Um, Jeez. we had talked about it being, I mean, people threw out the rock. I was like, there's no way that's going to happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, there, there were various people that were thrown out there to be the, you know, is it Danny Trejo? Is it, is it you know, there's a million, million <laughs> Danny Trejo. It's like, and then, you know, it's funny is like in season two, I, I saw like a tweet from, uh, from Stu Bennett, who was like, oh, I'm watching Lucha Underground and I'm loving it. So it's like I sent him a message and I was like, hey, Stu, dude, like long time no see. And, uh, you know, hey, if you're ever interested in ever doing anything with Lucha, you know, we'd love to have you because I've enjoyed working with you, uh, you know, in the past. And I think it'll be really cool. And you're awesome. So uh, so like right when we came about, there was a lot of reshuffling on the show and uh, and people changed characters and people who were supposed to be th things weren't ended up not being and it was it was a big we we're moving things around like crazy uh but um you know i reached out to Stu and i was like hey by the way uh would you be interested in doing this thing and the best part about it is we didn't tell anybody so nobody on the crew nobody on uh nobody none of the performers nobody knew that we were doing that so I think that was that that made it a really lot of fun. I got like crazy message from Ty. I was like, "Oh my god, what are you doing?" You know, like Johnny was like, "That is so crazy." Uh, so that was good. It's fun. It's fun to surprise a lot of the a lot of the talent. They don't ever get to see everybody else's storylines, so mm -hmm. that's kind of like the, a fun part for everybody. So, um, you know, and plus it's cool that the people who go to the temple they also don't get to see that stuff yeah. either. So. It makes the show new for everyone. One, one thing it, 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 from it's real exciting to have him there. And I thought actually, uh, you know, watching it again and again and again, I was just like, it was the perfect call because I think he's just great for that role. Mm -hmm. he, he, has a, he has a real presence that like, as soon as he leaned in, like, you know who he is, but at the same time, you could see him being a big overlord. Like, I mean, he was the leader of the Nexus. Yes, he was. Like, and now with the with the goatee, he just looks more badass. Yes. <laughs> so wait, is and this he the, smokes cigars now? Yeah, is this yeah, the nexus of the gods? Nexus of the gods. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the gods, the gods are are here, and they're ready to take take over the world. Um. So, is Taya part of that? Yes. Okay. All right. I was because she wasn't in the limbo. Yeah, I know. So I, 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 I want I wanted to make sure that she wasn't like a renegade god, like a like a third faction of okay, okay. Well, so she was I, dealing with Johnny Mundo, I guess, at the same time. That's yeah. Like, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with that, I, I want to go to to the Johnny Mundo thread because there was a thing with the uh, the 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 gauntlet, and I started questioning yep. um, Aerostar's choices. <laughs> during the season <laughs> after a yeah. while and i'm just like oh i don't know if this is gonna work aerostar um you I know aerostar was questioning aerostar's choices yes yeah by the way i saw phoenix at an indie show this week he gave me yes this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Did he drool on you? uh no actually he, he seemed better okay <laughs> oh he did <laughs> that's good good friend oh good oh good <laughs> He, he didn't have, he didn't drool everywhere. It was, uh, you know, it, it seemed it seemed like the Phoenix Force had passed him. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was, he was dark Phoenix anymore. Uh, Matt Carlin's is saying that uh, he's glad that uh, Stu can be his favorite wrestler again. So, <laughs> um, oh, oh, 
we have to mention because the video went around. Um, we noticed that Bad Mike and Mainstream Matt got a mention in the last episode, <laughs> in the last match. Yes. Yeah, and I tried to get Vamp to say your name, and then he was just like, "Who the fuck? What? I'm, I'm not fucking saying that." I was like, "Okay." I'm like, say, I was like, "Say Sorgatron. Say Sorg." Yeah, he's like, "Wait, wait, so I'm not doing Vampiro <laughs> refused to say my name." Yes, yes. All right, I'm yes. gonna, I'm, I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to hold. And then on. by that point, I think it was too late, and Stryker had already moved on. So I was like, "Damn it!" It's because I was talking. It's because I was talking about his hair on Twitter a f- couple months ago. Yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah. trying to get. A, oh, don't forget about Sorg. And then, and then, uh, yeah, Vamp was like, uh, "Yeah, basically, f you." I'm not saying that. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> See, Vampiro would only remember me because he told me eat a bag of dicks. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's just that's just standard. Jeez, yep. Alex is calling out a Vampiro yeah. versus Sorg in a Say My Name match. Oh, I like that. That's good. That's good. That's he'll good. never be able to say it. He'll never lose because he won't be able to say it. That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, when I was watching that, because I watched Ultima Lucha a little late, it was 1.30 in the morning, and I saw that. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> and I rewind it. I'm like, oh, my God. I literally couldn't sleep for like an hour and a half afterwards. I was like. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Stryker's, Stryker's the best in those things. You can tell him something like that, and then uh, yeah, he, you know, talk about it, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll get, definitely give those guys a shout out." Like, Hell yeah! And uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I noticed he was wearing like a shirt of one of the other podcasts that uh, does lucha reviews, and I'm like, "Yeah, we, we got fucking send Stryker a shirt." <laughs> yes, send him a shirt. Give it to me. I'll make. He'll wear it. This okay. Will like this will happen. <laughs> <laughs> make a note producer missy producer missy uh, uh, uh make a note uh, <laughs> she can just hand deliver it yeah yeah she no she's in northern california right now so it doesn't, she's still in california it's mike california is a big state yeah, yes potato potato I, oh, okay <laughs> sure it's closer than we are <laughs> that's true that's true that is not that's true too um, unless she drives <laughs> uh no i don't think she is uh especially especially the way things are going out there um yeah, uh, um uh, by the way i think uh bobby had a question before have you been able to watch johnny on survivor and how do you think oh hell yeah him? i'm a big survivor fan yeah. and uh yeah i'm like super excited about it yeah that, that he was on there he left uh for survivor like i think like four days or three days after we finished that that season so then oh, he just wow. went off. yeah so like he was uh it, it was a crazy whirlwind and i think in the meantime kaya was like planning the real wedding and like god i can only imagine how, how crazy that was but uh <laughs> it was pretty cool that was one of my favorite things to do too was, was to plan the wedding with those guys and to, uh that was a lot of fun to do our own lucha that's something that we've wanted to do since the season one was to like always take all the like wrestling staples and try to put our own twist on it and that was kind of uh, I, I could have cool. sworn did you, did you did the green wedding, the neon wedding I, I could have sworn Matanzo was going to pop out from under the ring just like Kane did <laughs> I could have sworn that was the exact thing that was going to happen <laughs> Yeah, I thought we, we thought about it. we didn't have the trap door to, to do that so uh, uh, yeah, that, that requires a lot of work <laughs> Oh geez, yeah. We um, had tacos though. We had tacos. Oh yeah. Oh no, the tacos looked fantastic until yeah. you know people went through them. Yes. What yes. was was the uh, were the believers disappointed that they didn't get free tacos? Uh, yeah, I think they were mad. I think they were pretty <laughs> mad, but they were from Del Taco, so you know. I... <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That's. <laughs> I'm so glad I actually know what Del Taco is now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what Del Taco is, Mike? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like instead of getting a sixty-nine cent taco, you can get like a thirty-nine cent taco. Ah, it's like yeah, not, yeah. Not, not nearly as good. It, really it, is, good. it is some it's good. I well. it is some good. I just need to eat some shit after yeah, a yeah. job. It's for when it's for, yeah, it's for when you're really drunk and have not a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what. I, it's like White Castle, kind of. It's the White not Castle of tacos. <laughs> Oh man. Um so about the like was it always in the cards for Ricky to mess up the wedding based uh with uh Rosa? Yeah, that was kind of the idea. Uh, okay. yeah. What when the whole doll thing kind of came about, 
we didn't know exactly how we we're going to do it. But then, you know, the more that kind of Ricky character caught on being kind of like this jealous, like fanboy of Johnny, we thought it'd be perfect for him to fuck everything up. Um, all right. Now, you don't have to disclose this if you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Who voices the doll? Oh, it's actually, oh God, I forget her name off the top of my head. Uh, she's actually, she was in Twin Peaks. Um, oh, God, wait a she's like a, she's like a famous character actress. Um, she's been in so many different things. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember. Jeez, I'm um, picturing this because I just watched like a, a an 80s TV documentary about Twin Peaks. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. I'm, I'm looking up Twin Peaks now. So, <laughs> That's great. Oh yeah, K- Kimmy Robertson. Kimmy Robertson. Oh. Okay. Yes. yes, she was the voice of uh, of of Rosa. Um, yeah, she's been. Uh, yeah, yeah, she was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, she was great. She was great. Um, and and she was a. Uh, it was really fun to have her in in the booth doing that. Like, uh, man, it, we had a great time. So she, she she's like a she's like a big big actress busy actress who's working all the time and she read the script she's like oh this is so cool I, I get to be a possessed doll I really like she kind of sounds like a child when you actually talk to her so it was mm-hmm. like, it's perfect <laughs> so did Ricky and Ty get to hear like the voice that was coming out of the doll no or no there was no, no, off of what no the yeah yeah the, yeah, the, yeah there was just some dude in, from production being like uh being like why don't you kill them, Ricky? Or whatever. Yeah. Trying to, <laughs> yeah. You know, or, or, uh, <laughs> oh. oh, Matt wants to know whose brilliant idea was it to mic up Brenda during the wedding? Oh, that, that was, a, we, a, we, we knew we were going to do that anyway. But like, she just, she did not, there was points where she just did not stop talking during the wedding. I'm like, we got to get through the damn ceremony, and Brenda keeps talking. But everything she was saying was gold. So it was like, <laughs> it's oh my god, I, your grandpa! Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> your grandpa, I losing my mind. <laughs> oh jeez, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think have we touched on everything here? Well, when I gotta say this, you you were kind of teasing about uh, how bloody this was going to get. I think at the beginning of the season. Yeah, Holy yeah, it was shit. lots of deaths. I, I, we were, t- we were teasing about having kind of a, uh, a, a death toll counter, uh, <laughs> through the season. Like, I think it, there was like fifteen to seventeen deaths if you count like the sacrifices. And stuff yeah, like yeah, and I, I think we were for the most part, and it was, it just seemed like it was like we're just like, have we gone through an episode without like actual deaths? Um, yeah, there was, there was a while when we were losing somebody like every every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It was like The Walking uh, Dead. You didn't know who was next. Yeah, that, 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 that's good. That's a good part. That's a good part of it. Um, an interesting way to write people off. Um, to get the and not going. necessarily, yeah, and not necessarily write people off because like people were like, "Oh, Phoenix but maybe, is gone." Yeah. And then people thought Dante wasn't part of the season, and then, you know, it's it's uh, right. Yeah. Because I'm working with a promotion out here that's been like doing something where they're like kind of again writing people off for the the, the course of a storyline, um, and it's like injury, 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 and then one guy actually got injured, but um, you know, like that kind of thing. And it's like, well, you see that all the time. Versus like, well, we're just going to sacrifice some people. Yeah, we're just going to stab them in the neck with a pen. <laughs> yeah, you know, as you do as rip, you their, do. rip their heart out with a steel gauntlet. Oh, you know. <laughs> All right, so speaking of violence, can we talk about fucking Marty and how awesome he is? Oh, he's amazing. He's amazing. Uh, you know, that match actually ended up getting cut a little short. I would uh, imagine, yeah. Because he had just lost so much blood, and it was just like, we can't we can't keep going here. <laughs> like, man, he's... he. But he, he was pissed, a little pissed off afterwards because I think he wanted to really really finish it and uh you know there, there, there were some improvisation kind of towards the end of that not to get to the end but man he just had a he said he just had been on such a roll from the very beginning and kind of the transformation that he's done like i, I just man i it, it he is like a he a true star in my opinion and like you know i i think that he's really really shown kind of his range not only as a wrestler but as a performer and actor and man i just god He's, he's he could be one of my favorite characters for sure. 
Yeah, like he was he was one of my favorite characters, like even from the start when he was just the creepy guy hanging outside, like waiting for a shot. Like, yeah, I I think and I think I I forget who I was talking to about Lucha. I think someone at work. Um, But I was saying, like, I think Marty's had the most progression of any character, like from season one to now. And considering who we have on Lucha, that's saying a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can totally agree with that. I think I think it's pretty. He's had just an amazing progression, and and all doing it while not really winning a whole lot, by the way. And yeah, I think it's supposed to show you that, like you know, you can still get over, and it doesn't always matter. You don't need to just win matches to get over. He went and got himself over, and and embraced the character, and uh, and I think it I think it worked out just fine. Uh, from the chat, uh, mainstream Matt's asking, whose death broke your heart the most? Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Um, I have a guess. Well, I probably, probably, um, probably Katrina's uh, death Ooh. broke my heart the most. Just because, uh, yeah, I, I love that character, and I think uh, I think that was a lot, lots of fun. Um, that one, that one was real, real sad. But uh, I'm trying to think of anybody else that any other deaths who else died. I was oh, thinking. Uh, I think- uh, oh, Vinny, that one, yeah, that, yeah, that, that didn't really break my heart at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> all right. Okay. Honestly, I love, I love Vinny. I love it. I love it. <laughs> he knows I'm just ribbing. I'm just kidding. I love it. Jeez. Um, I know I had losing another... that pizza. I'll, I'll, we'll never be the same since that the pizza guy. Once he went, that was it. You know, it's the worst one. Oh, the other, the other thread that I, I enjoyed uh, seeing wrapped up uh, was uh, the kill shot storyline as yes. well yes um yes you know kind of felt where we're going that way it, it, it was it was kind of nice to see that like final moment with them and uh, uh you know there was a nice little thread uh that, that went through it wasn't you know wasn't around you know the magical and the death and everything like that and, and tribes it was just it was like a real like it was a very american story really yes, kind of inserted in it's, it's odd to have that much closure yeah on a on a lucha storyline too like that i was like oh th- like uh, cause i i saw a lot of people like were like hey it was okay i'm like i think that's actually kind of cool because it's something completely different but you can tell it was like just a kind of a real moment like for, yeah yeah like, I, it, it was a real moment i think between two guys who who beat the living hell out of each other at one point <laughs> and kind of made their names uh, 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 in Lucha off, the, off that one match. And it also tied in the storylines, uh, basically Killshot's entire storyline. And, uh, you know, I mean, sure, could we have had Dante, like, pull a pin out of a grenade and throw it at Killshot and just blow him up? <laughs> sure. That would have been fun. That but, almost, I, I but, think, but that almost but seems... I think, but I think, I think that's exactly what people expected. Yeah, and that's why that seems to way that. too Lucha Underground to do that. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And plus, it leaves it open for them to like come back as a unit. Mm-hmm. Sure, absolutely. Yep. Uh, I want to. I would just want to touch on a few comments here before we move on. Uh, Alex Cards would really like to see Nick Gage in season season five. Uh, Joey mm-hmm. Janela was brought up. Uh, David Arquette was brought up. David Arquette. Oh, was up. <laughs> yeah. David Arquette was actually going to be. Uh, in season three, he was the, the original Benjamin Cook, and I think uh, w- when you when you look at there's a line that's like he's like he's like sexy star uh, is the worst world champion ever. That line was written for David Arquette to say because yeah, he's the worst world champion ever. You know, at that time, I love David Arquette's great. Jeez. So but instead, you got know, shot him in the crowd. He could we couldn't make it happen. And, uh, yeah, so so then we went and got the, the guy who looks like Paul Heyman. Uh, Bobby F. Town is calling out for Magnum CK to be on. Uh, if you haven't seen him, definitely recommend it. I can send you some stuff. Uh, <laughs> doing sure. Some, doing some great stuff over here. Um, we are open to have anybody. I mean, I think uh, another, like, you know, I mean, uh, Exolicious was a, was a new uh, addition. Um, yeah, we need to talk about Exo, oh, my God. Amazing. For those who don't know, that's Sunny Kiss and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, just uh, yeah. One of the first times I saw him wrestle, I was like, uh, like Striker had sent me a video or something. I was like, man, this guy is great. He, he's he's got it. And and, uh, and he, he it was really fun to to have him be part of the show too. 
I think along those lines, uh, uh, Jesse out there is, is calling for Effie to be part of it. Uh, I don't know if you're okay. aware of Effie, uh, but uh, I think it works mostly Florida. Effie has wrestled a child. I see Effie. Yeah, Effie did wrestle um, uh, Izzy. So the, the, the Bailey super fan. Yes. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. So um, not opposed to doing unique things. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of like <laughs> it's somewhere. It's somewhere in between Exolicious and Joey Ryan is probably how I get to describe him. Does that oh. seem appropriate, Mike? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that's I think that's an accurate. Uh, they must be awesome. Yes, that it is. Awesome. It is, yeah. and uh, we did an interview with him on a uh, Indie Mayhem show. And man, does he get marketing! Holy shit! Uh, it, and Magnum is a, is a guy that does like he legit does theater in Ohio, and uh, and it, it's come like this last year has just been amazing for both those guys. So if we can have our Mayhem picks for season five, it's going to be those two guys. Does Does Magnum should get a partner named Blue Steel? That, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Whoa. Uh, I'll be sending you some, we'll, we'll, we'll be sending you some stuff. I'll, I'll be sending you some packages here in your DMs uh, afterwards. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, all right. Anything else, Mike? You want to touch on before we move um, on here? Who Who is your favorite new character to bring in? Oh gosh, um, man. Uh, I like uh, I like I, I I like all of them. I guess. Um, I love all my children. <laughs> yeah, I really do. I mean, I love them all in a certain kind of way. Uh, you know, I think EXO definitely stood out and, and was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, one of my favorite things is uh, um, when when EXO is doing his, like, 80s flash, uh, flash dance routine. Oh and, God, yes. and Ricky asks Jack, he's like, oh, what, what are you doing? He's like, studying my opponent's every move. I just find that so hilarious. That it's just... <laughs> It's the just one of the funniest things. Yeah, so weird. It's so weird. Nuts. I'm like, oh my god, we're really doing this. Okay, yeah, and that, that kind of came about is like sitting around being like, what if EXO had a did an aerobics like flash dance dance with like leg warmers and everything? And we're like, okay, we have to do it. We have to do it. I mean, that's the kind of things that happen when we make this show. It's like just sitting in the own room throwing out absurd ideas, and then sometimes everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we find a way to make it work and uh yeah that's that's the best that's one of the best parts uh, about it my, i think my favorite edition even though it was very late uh reclusa oh mm-hmm. reclusa was amazing i like, forgot about reclusa. oh my uh, god man. It's like i mean she's in nxc now unfortunately so i know if there's a season yeah. five, they will come back but boy for only being on two episodes two three episodes mm-hmm. She, she made, an she made impact. a huge, huge impact. Yeah, huge impact. yeah, and uh, yeah, she was she was just so great to have around, and, and that actually kind of came about as like, uh, you know, we had some ideas for somebody else to play it. I won't say who it is because in case we do something with that person later on, mm-hmm. and and then uh, and then um, Taya was like, "Hey, my friend Chelsea's in town. She wants to come by the temple and work a match." And then she came and worked a match, and then we kind of talked. I was like. You know, gosh, she would be awesome as 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 Reclusa. So, uh, we'd be like, hey, uh, will you dye your hair uh, darks to match kind of the Reclusa thing? And we we put together a whole whole outfit and 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 gear and everything. And she like embraced it. Like just seeing her, we we had done a few dark matches where we kind of put her and Marty out there together to kind of uh, test them out a little bit because we had had Marty had his arm broken early in the season, so. We got to test them in front of the live audience just to see, you know, the hot mess and then with Marty and then kind of see how they kind of work together. Uh, and then and then that's kind of how the reclusive thing happened. So, oh. yeah, really cool. I, uh, thank I, you, Taya. I know we've kind of like poked this, this before, but we really, I think, want to see a, you know, uh, a cutting room floor matches DVD of some sort of stuff. Yeah, like you that. know, it's, it's funny. I was just kind of talking about talking with that. <laughs> with uh with eric van wagon about that today kind of like a you know what if we just go and show some of those matches that that or some even some of the dark matches like you know the evolution of like matanza and like mm-hmm. how we kind of went from point a to point b and all the dark matches i mean there are some crazy matches that we did that that people haven't even seen that some say are even crazier than some of the stuff we, we put on tv so i, I yeah, mean that, that's I, I i would buy all of it 
Yes, I would too. <laughs> I would buy all of it. That's that's what I'm trying to say. There's people out there like you who would buy it. Yes. So we should sell it. Categorically. Yeah, I, agree. I, I, I would I would buy it in any if if it was in beta, I'd fucking buy it in beta and figure out a way to fucking play it on my TV. Well, if Al Ray doesn't want if Al Ray doesn't want to do anything, we can have you over at Indie Wrestling Network. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> so uh awesome chris always amazing talking with if you want to stick around with us for the big question i'm going to be talking about some uh david arquette stories i guess so uh um, sure i just want to hear the story so sure i'll hang around for a little bit awesome thanks a lot uh of course guys this is fueled at least here locally for us and if we have any guests in unfortunately larry couldn't make it in here tonight uh but my uh, good friends <laughs> right up the road at slice on broadway supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza and well the dog likes it the dog wants some slice over there hold on I let me get there he is <laughs> it's actually freaking me out because the dog reminds me of the, the the dog that got possessed in venom spoilers uh oh, he is he, he is possessed that's he right. is possessed <laughs> he might be a symbiote because that's how they say it in that movie but anyways he's my, he's my son he's crazy right, right before you leave he's just going to look into the camera and say i am a god <laughs> <laughs> and then put his paw on my head and just yeah. no he's just gonna stick his, <laughs> stick his paw through your chest and pull <laughs> <up>. <laughs> This is the weirdest slice on Broadway ad ever. But anyways, <laughs> thank you to our friends, Beachview, Carnegie, West End, PNC Park. Check them out. Do not kick the door down. Uh, Dave Potter of Tiny Shutter Podcast. Uh, go visit them and let them know the Mayhem Show sent you uh, while we were talking about um, God-possessed uh, devil dogs. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. God-possessed devil dogs. Those sound delicious. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with a big question of fan mail and so much more after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Breaking news hot off the presses. The chat room here at uh, the Facebook Live are uh, keeping us abreast of the, of the uh, situation. But... Um, Apparently, we have a new WWE champion, the last SmackDown before Survivor Series. It appears that Daniel Bryan has beat AJ Styles to finish the show. And, and apparently turned full on heel. Turned full on heel? Turned full on heel. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah. So, um, hey, guess what? WWE decided to write this week. <laughs> They've decided to get real interesting this week. They decided to be like, hey, you know what? Becky's face got broken. Let's do something we probably should have done months ago. Yeah, of course, last night, uh, a, a bloodied Becky uh, Lynch, uh, you know, we talked about on the Raw wrap up. Uh, unfortunately, that led to, uh, was it a broken nose and a concussion she received? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, so she's pulled from the Ronda Rousey thing. It's going to be Charlotte versus Ronda at Survivor Series. So going from eh Survivor Series to hey Survivor Series, I think yeah, is just really. Oh, what's that, Mike? Sorry, my internet um got possessed by a demon doll. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, that it's a shame what happened to Becky last night because that segment was amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but but she came she came out on SmackDown like right before we went on the air. She came out like a boss and she picked her replacement and now it's gonna be Charlotte versus Ronda. Wait, was that the dog? Yeah. <laughs> I told you. The dog has opinions. The dog has opinions about this. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> He's mad because I took I took his Christmas hedgehog. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's never too early to start Christmas time. Oh. Okay. Oh yes That's it is. We need to see at some point. We need to see a very lucha Christmas. Oh, that is definitely in the works. That is definitely in the works. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that's something we've wanted to do since a long time ago. Uh, like, and just make it like the Star Wars holiday special. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. We do. We do have a. <laughs> we do have a <laughs> fan. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Now, now I have a whole bunch of things in my head. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, so I wanted to get to, uh, we do have a, we'll get back to the WWE talk in just a moment, but uh, we do, it, you know, thanks to uh, Bo Diggity actually emailed us this week. <laughs> but we also have, thanks to Tina Keys out there, actually recommended uh, a, a very timely... <laughs> dog still has opinions <laughs> we'll ask him the question too uh she asks uh hey um which wwe d- current wwe or nxt uh stars uh would be a great fit for the marvel universe uh, i think is appropriate and dedication to uh stan lee who passed this week unfortunately um but I, also with this i believe there was something going around of uh, uh images of <laughs> John Cena, um, John Cena as Captain America, for instance, which makes an, a whole bunch of sense. I don't know what that new haircut, but um, well, I I think Batista would make a great Drax the Destroyer. Oh yeah, hey, how about yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not my answer. Um, ooh, that's that's really tough. I I love that question because mm-hmm. you know Stan Lee is amazing. Um. Oh, if I had to pick, you know what? Ricochet is Miles Morales. Ooh, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. He's, okay, he's not like a fourteen-year-old though, but no. generally. But there's a Miles Morales in the six one six universe that, you know, it could be that. Okay, okay, I can yeah. see that. Or help make him Miguel O'Hara. I, I just want to see Ricochet as Spider Man. Let Let's just pick one. Let's not get it twisted. Just pick just one. There's a whole Spider Verse. Yeah, Rey Mysterio as Mysterio. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I just want a movie. I just want a movie with Mysterio in it. Period. No, not not Rey. The other one. I, I love. Him. I love him. Yeah. I know some people think he's a weak villain, but I, he's. I'm an Aquaman guy too. So you know. Yeah. Oh wow! Good no, I'm with you. I I've wanted Bruce Campbell to play Mysterio in those Raimi films for years. Hmm. Like I wanted the Bruce Campbell character that kept showing up to just be Mysterio scouting Spider Man. Oh, it'd be awesome. <laughs> if only. If only. <laughs> Jeez. Uh <laughs> is that your answer? Is that your official answer is Ray Mysterio? Ray yes, Mysterio. Ray Mysterio. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the the Lucha Mask the one over the fishbowl? Yes, yes. Underneath. Okay. Oh, under under the fishbowl. Under the fishbowl. Okay. Yeah, every, yeah, occasionally <laughs> you can see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Completely. We didn't. We didn't hire like the guy that is Ray Mysterio. We just hired Ray Mysterio to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, that'd be. Is that, it, it's know, almost as bad as my Mayhem Mania stuff. Is that what? No, that what no, I, I think Ray Mysterio would be much more. <laughs> like uh, fighting shoots a web, but Mysterio just six one nines around it. It'd be great. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't and even have... I, what? They kind of did that. If you watch that newest WWE 2K19 promo, Mysterio doubles himself in that promo. Yep. So just See, pick... They're playing, they're playing all, the robot, all the little robot Mysterios, it's all a rich tapestry. Mm-hmm. Oh, th- after the big question, I wanted to ask about that because I feel like they kind of ripped off Lucha. <laughs> Um, I, I I gotta say, uh, how about uh, Vince McMahon as Norman Osborn? Oh Jesus! <laughs> that, yeah. Oh, and and Mr. McMahon is the Green Goblin. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I like that. It makes sense. It makes sense. And then you know, Ricochet is Miles, and you know, there's a thing there. So yeah. I I love how we we went Marvel ver- universe and oh, just cast Spider Man. Harry? What's that? Does that make Shane Harry on Shane is Harry, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, here comes the goblin. Here comes the goblin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. So that would make let's 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 still go down this rabbit hole. Triple H could be Flash Thompson. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm with you. I'm with you. Keep, and, keep it going. And there's two options. Uh, you know what? Now, okay. Okay. You think I'm going to say Stephanie McMahon's going to be Gwen Stacy, don't you? Linda. No. 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 Stephanie. So Linda, Linda's Aunt May. Let's. No, oh, that's good. I like that. Oh, that's actually, good. that's really good. Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie is the Peter clone that was the Spider Girl in the <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> Universe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
in Ultimate Spider-Man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Well, <laughs> there you that's go. A, that's a very twisted McMahon family. <laughs> it's a very twisted. Yep. Um, um, we have a couple answers in the chat room. Okay. That happened. Um, Wheels says Big E is Luke Cage. Ooh. Which, Ooh. Yes, yes and please. Um, and let's see. There's another one. <laughs> what was that? Kevin Owens says Howard the Duck. <laughs> Uh, yes and please <laughs> hey man if Ryan Reynolds can be Pikachu anything can happen <laughs> that's a fair point uh, also Becky Lynch is a female Deadpool uh, that, that'd be interesting I oh man there are so many options because mm-hmm. like, like I kind of want Baszler as She-Hulk ah uh-huh. I can see that, but I would lean towards Charlotte. Okay. All right. I guess. Charlotte seemed like the obvious answer. I was trying to pick someone a little, a little, a little, uh, you know, low key, a little bit more low key. Uh, yeah. You're up to Zaro at the Silver Surfer. That would work. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Was either wait, him or Titus I was going to go with. Wait, if know. Cesaro is the Silver Surfer, <laughs> if Cesaro is the Silver Surfer, who is he the Herald for? Who plays Galactus? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Lesnar? Oh, that's good. They're, they're both Paul Heyman guys. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, let us know. I have a feeling we'll get some more social media ones out of this. Uh, uh, the hashtag WMS big question. If you want to know, oh, I'm going to be thinking of new ones the entire time. We day. should just start a thread on the group right now. Uh, we really should. <laughs> Cause we could go down to some weird fan fiction at this point. Um, so we do have an email. Holy crap. We get email. You guys, it is Bo fucking diggity who has emailed Woo! us. It's been a while. He's been quiet out there. I see tweets every once in a while from him. But, uh, you know, good to see that he's still out there and listening and has some some thoughts. He has, uh, he, he says, uh, I, if I may present a question, a quandary, a predicament, what is the fucking point of Survivor Series? <laughs> yeah, it has been something for me personally because I'm comparing what's happening there with, like, everything that was made of Lucha Underground. It, 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 it's hard not to at this point, even though they're completely different. Um, the shows magically drop every feud they have to go fight each other, uh, then immediately brainwipe you and go back to what they're doing. Why should we, the wrestling fan public, give one iota of a shit about this? Yes, Becky Lynch is awesome, and she will literally kill someone on live television the next month, and it will be amazing. Of course, uh, he, he sent this in before what we know on SmackDown tonight. Uh, this is his suggestion. Um, uh, um, so, one, make Survivor Series matches mean something. Winner gets their match to main event Mania. Losing show. I don't think putting something out in Mania that far out makes sense, though. But the- um, well, As soon as you finish the email, I'm going to tell you something that I don't think you've heard of yet. Oh, okay. Losing a show uh, to forfeit titles that have uh, tournaments to replace the champions. First pick in the talent draft. Something hell. I'm super into the idea of a catch bonus for winners. Yeah. I, I think as easy as that, right? Like, you get the bigger purse. Remember when Gorilla said that just, like, the wrestling was no, about the getting winner, the money the winner, at the end? Yeah, the winner's share of the purse. Mm-hmm. Like that. I, had pit, I had pitched when I was there, like, why doesn't the... Why don't we do, like, a final, like, the Soul Survivor and that person gets oh. a title match at the Rumble or something mm-hmm. like that? Um, I, that was anything. That was the greatest Survivor Series ever, where they took the winners from all the Survivor Series matches and they put them yeah. in one big, uh, like, heels versus faces and whoever yeah. won. I like, wish we could just go back to when teams had cool names, you know? I just, mm-hmm. I, I love that. The Hulkamaniacs. Cool. Cool names. Yes. Um, if you're, if you're going to, uh, two, he says, if you're going to do in quote invasion angles, run that shit like a house show, have an entire dang raw ro- roster show up on a SmackDown house show and now tuna or something and get the crowd videos, make it mm-hmm. seem like there anything could, ha- it could happen anywhere. Uh, when you do paint by number storylines, da, 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 da. Uh, you know, I'm kind of with that. Cause it's kind of like what, how Nexus became big, right? Like yeah. it was just like, Oh shit, this is different. You know, they, they did something. I wasn't just running and beat or- people up. Or even the the start of anyway the WCW invasion. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The start of the WCW invasion started with Booker T 
attacking at the end of a pay-per-view and then Mike Awesome the next night on Raw winning the hardcore title. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I like number three here. Give NXT a team. Effectively, NXT has made war games into their Survivor Series show. Uh, but it's worth doing after undis- But is it worth doing after Undisputed Era uh, goes to the main roster? Yeah, they've been kind of the big crux of the last two years of it, haven't they? Um, can't think of who's next after after uh, Undisputed Era. You don't know what kind of faction they could build up. Oh, he said if he had to pick, it's uh, EC3, Ricochet, Dunn, uh, Black, and Champa. What for uh, for the top five of NXT, and they they oh, could God. you could throw them in a three way match uh, where you know uh, NXT wins just to see the main roster fans' heads explode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his opinion as it stands survivor series is the dumbest pay-per-view on the calendar if you're going to uh do the show versus show thing just bring back bra- bragging rights uh this has been bo f diggity the f is for fluorescence woo excellent excellent um, excellent so so uh i think wwe has kind of embraced this a little bit okay not necessarily for survivor series but did you hear what the winner of the Mixed Match Challenge gets? No. It's not, so for, it's not for charity anymore? No. No, it's not for charity because uh, this Mixed Match Challenge has lasted like two months long. Yeah, they're doing like a crazy round robin or something, right? Yeah. Like it feels uh, very uh, it feels very New Japan. Yeah, apparently the winner of the Mixed Match Challenge, which will be determined at TLC, um, each member gets the number 30 spot in their Royal Rumble. Oh, and an all expense paid trip somewhere. Somewhere? For reasons, anywhere they want. I don't know. It, it was on dot com. It was thrown in. I'm like, oh, okay. that, like, that sounds like something Vince added to the last second. Or it was like, uh, okay, I want to get out of this meeting. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> It, be- it, it, it better be the winners like awkwardly going on a vacation somewhere and we get vignettes from it that turn into something else, right? You know. Be- Anywhere they want for vacation? That's what it says. Oh gosh, I'd go like oh I'd go for something crazy. Oh yeah, I'd go to the moon. Why are we in Newark, New Jersey? Why are we- <laughs> <Hey>, bitch? <laughs> Oh jeez. Well, yeah. It, so, like I said, it, it, we got we got a pretty uh, reshuffled uh, Survivor Series here, and I'm sure a lot of the recent events have something to do with why this is such a odd kind of setup for this year. Um, so we'll, well see. Also, it, they also didn't have that much time to build. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, like, between Evolution and the pay per view that shall not be named, there was only like two weeks. Although, it is is it kind of nice to not have several? Let's be they don't. They, they screw everything up. <laughs> See, horrible. I'll take that from you. I don't know if I can I, I can take that from Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's still true. <laughs> Although I think Mike is, is knowing more and more about how they think every day at this point. So, anyways, um, uh, Bobby says, "Goddamn, pal, send him to the temple." <laughs> I mean, Shane won the freaking what you call it, the yeah. uh, World Cup. What the yeah. hell was that? Yeah, that that was that was not that was not a good idea. <laughs> all right, let's let's get back to positivity on this show. First of all, I want to give a shout out to our friends in a very positive way over at Occupy Pro Wrestling. So celebrating the fandom of pro wrestling is what they're doing over there with their podcast. Pro Wrestling's wild and crazy art form. The Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun, featuring article blogs and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back into smart mark. Go check it out at OccupyProWrestling.com and uh, definitely check out their t-shirt selection they have a lot of, uh, well, actually, one of them featured on uh, season three of Lucha Underground uh, with the uh, <laughs> uh, Legends of the Lucha Temple uh, t-shirt when we were hanging out over there uh, uh, for that. Uh, so go check that out. A lot of Nickelodeon and uh, kind of 90s themed stuff going on there uh, at their whatamaneuver.net store. OccupyProWrestling.com. And uh, check out their sister podcast, Chikara, in 15 minutes as well. How do I make this go away? I went to editing mode on my phone and I don't know how to get out. Anyways, it doesn't matter because we're going to talk about David Arquette. Uh, <laughs> so a fascinating thing happened to Mad Mike and I this weekend. We were both, um, uh, well, my team was was uh, recording IWC's Winners Take All show here in the 
Pittsburgh area. And meanwhile, we had been talking about for a while how Mad Mike was going to go to his first um, independent wrestling show for a while because Omega and uh, Kenny Omega and Phoenix was happening. Turns out <laughs> David Arquette has made an appearance at both shows unannounced. Yep. Uh, cool. Uh, just I, I have no words that I was able to watch Phoenix versus Omega and David Arquette give someone a diamond cutter on the same show. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to indie wrestling. <laughs> and RVD versus uh, Lucha Underground Champion Jack Swagger. <laughs> It was just, uh, it was, it was a weird show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a weird show. It was good. It was good. I, I, I highly recommend it. Hey, anyone, uh, they stream down high spots. Go look up Northeast Wrestling Redemption. Watch the show. Look for this fucking Mark <laughs> freaking out over everything. Right on. This guy is he. He is. What did you say? Um, you look for the guy that um got no soul. Well, the, the, guy with the black shirt and the beard. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't see you. I was looking, and I could not find you. I I'm right on the uh, on the right side of the ramp. Like if the camera's facing toward the ramp when they're coming out, I I, I sent out a picture where I circled where, where myself was. I'll find that uh-huh. tweet again, and I'll uh, I'll retweet it for you. How Ooh. awesome was that match live? Um, with all due respect to Lucha Underground and the phenomenal season four, it may be the best match I've seen all year. Uh, it's Kenny Omega and Phoenix, so yeah, yeah. I, I can see. <laughs> uh, well, well, how many people were there? Uh, they filled the arena. I don't know how much the Mid Hudson Civic Center holds these days, but yeah. uh, it was pretty full. Like I, I was reasonably close to a sellout. I know there were a couple empty seats in the row I was in, but it was so it was sold. I heard that they made a lot of money off that show. So that's oh, cool. I'm I'm sure they did. Like it, <laughs> it was it was a very good show. Like any W man, any Michael Bryan and any W, they always mm-hmm. they run good good shows. Yeah, and uh, Penta was there too. Penta get, Penta wrestled uh, Darby Allen. Um, nice. Just yeah. uh, according, and I had never seen that guy before. I am a fan, and um, if we're looking for someone in a potential Lucha season five, Darby Allen fits right in. <laughs> That's not a joke. Like, just look up one video. Oh yeah, he fits right in. <laughs> oh, is that the guy I'm thinking? I'm looking him up again. Oh, I'll th- okay. Well, uh, by the way, it has an according to Wikipedia holds about three thousand. Yeah. So that sounds right. And that's probably not counting floor seating. So there's yeah. that uh, entrance and all that kind of stuff. Um, no, NEW is great. They do these uh, ball field shows up in N- Niles, Ohio. Um, I got to film one, and I think Rob or cameraman Rob uh, got to film one uh, this past year as well. And yeah, it's always like, you know, an insane mix of big talents. Like these are ones like Corey Graves shows up on these shows from time to time <laughs> somehow. Uh, so they got some. Yeah, and, you, and, and you always get to see the king uh, always. Right. He's always there for one one thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like the king was there. He was wrestling um, another <laughs> king, Brian Anthony. And that's where oh, Dan showed up. I, I, I love Brian Anthony. I, I, when I. Did Indies in Connecticut? Brian Anthony wrestled on on my shows there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it was, it was King versus him in a no DQ match. Trained by Paul Roma. Really? Yes. Huh? I did not know that. So, huh. so wait, did so he was involved in the King versus King match? Yeah. Did he yell, "I will rule you"? No. He no. Should. It was sleazy there. It was sleazy there. Uh, no. No, no, sadly not. Although, um, when when David Arquette was going back up the ramp, I screamed at him. I literally just watched Scream last night because I had. <laughs> <laughs> just like, and I know he heard me because I saw a, a quick smile. I'm like, okay, he heard me. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> it's somebody still cares. <laughs> yeah. Um, so mine was was interesting. Um, he was, you know, as you know, he's been doing the thing with RJ City. This like they had a match, and then they've been tag teaming here and there. They got announced as, as a tag team against our, our local champions, uh, uh, Team Storm, uh, trained at Lance Storm Academy. Do this kind of Canadian um, sympathizer thing. Really good. Jackson Argos, RC Dupree, um, amazing guys. Um, and then and then their partner actually, uh, Jack Pollock, who has the main title. 
uh, had a, a Tommy Dreamer in an Extreme Rules match. Not 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 related. So so they come out and this video is online. Again, and I think the same thing happened to you. He was announced and then he, he sent a video that said he couldn't make it and had to cancel, right? Yeah. So and then showed up anyway. Um, he came out, announced, uh, uh, Colt, and, Colt replaced him in the match. So it was RJ City and Colt Cabana, which is amazing. Two guys that fought before, kind of two sides of the comedy coin, I'd say, you probably. Um, and they announced him coming out, and he comes out in this fur coat and says, I'm going to be your manager. Takes it off. He's wearing chaps for some reason. Um, takes that off. So he's in ring gear, like trunks and and everything, as a manager the entire time. Does a dive off of the top rope, which looked good. He got air, right? <laughs> uh, and and tag team shenanigans um, uh, proceed. Uh, but th- there's been a thread for a while in IWC because a friend of, that we interviewed for a while um, a while ago, Kitty Arquette, this is probably her third year in wrestling and the thing is she's like you know the cousin of david arquette and everything right you know the hollywood and all that kind of stuff so and and i think last year when she faced lufisto in a cage uh david like actually sent a video like an i like you know a camera phone video you know saying hey i hope you beat her up you know and, and messed up lufisto's name and so he comes out when the ref gets bumped um th- no shenanigans or anything like just just calls the uh the uh the submission on Britt baker the current champion and there's the arquettes in the ring uh celebrating and gives her the fur coat uh so it was re- kind of a really surreal night <laughs> for that uh and you know everybody's excited to see him and everything and i hear i again i didn't get to interact with them but i heard really good stories about those who did so David, do you think it'd be like with 2018 and David Arquette is all over the wrestling news? It's amazing. It's 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 great. It's also it's it's head scratching yet really what, what great. What a time to be alive! What a time to be alive! What a time! What a time! And I haven't even seen some kind of Blu-ray re-release of uh, Ready to Rumble getting promoted or anything. So, God, it's a bad movie. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> Two life choices. Two, two, two life choices. It's no two life choices. I'll never take it back. Uh, go into the theater to see No Holds Barred and Ready to Rumble. Yeah, I want to see another Triple Cage, man. I want to see another Triple Cage. Um, if only you had sway over some kind of promotion that could maybe do that. I I pitch the Triple Cage every year in WWE when I was there. Every year I pitch the Triple Cage, and it always got shot down. <laughs> well, we do the trip. At least somebody brought back war games eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, that's the Which problem. I'm going to. I'm going to war games. I'm going to war games on Saturday. Oh, I'm jealous. So I'm my second WWE show since I left there, and uh, I'm pretty excited for it. Hopefully, Ricochet jumps off the cage. Oh, I, I don't guarantee many things. I'm pretty sure that's a guarantee. <laughs> I had the feeling too. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be fun. I'm excited. Yeah, that's that's. So if you're there, come say what's up. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. I think Alex. Uh, what Alex Miller is going. Uh, we saw in the chat room. So hopefully he says hi to you over there. And so, Alex Card's going. Yeah, he is too. So all the Alexes are going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, War Games is gonna be real dope. Hmm. Like it, it, it looks like one of the best cards that they've put out on NXT. Jeez, that's saying that's something. saying that's saying a lot. That's saying something. I can't wait to catch up this week. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Um, did did you did you Chris did you say you had a David Arquette story you wanted to share? I already told it. Oh, you, oh. David Arquette was yeah, going to be on the Lucha Underground. Oh, that part. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, mix that around. I'll fix that in post. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well i told the story about david arquette originally uh david was interested in maybe doing something with lucha underground we talked for a little bit we wrote this character named benjamin cook who was the agent of johnny mundo and originally it was going to be david arquette and uh fortunately some things fell through but david still came to the show and he was really awesome and uh he, he was really cool to do it, but that's why there was a line that was written that said, oh, Sexy Star is, is 
it, uh, is the worst world champion ever. And that was, yeah, David Arquette was supposed to say that line. So, yeah. I do kind of like how, how you guys wrote off Sexy Star. I thought that, yeah. that was very... Uh, Spider Lady. Yeah. She was haunted by Reclusa, yeah. That, that was pretty... Like, I'm, I'm assuming there was... Before all the unpleasantness with Sexy Star, that was supposed to be like a big thread probably in season four, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, that's why, that's why like, you guys don't shy away from stuff like that. Like, Yeah, we, we, we try our best to not throw a storyline out. If there's a way we can solve it, we'll try to solve the problem. Because, yeah. mm. I mean, that, that's always a pet peeve of mine with any show. Uh, wrestling more is that, you know, even in my time working at WWE, it was just like sometimes it'd be like a storyline would just drop and like, God, nobody cares. Nobody will remember that. It's like, I think I, I believe that like wrestling fans have like the best memory ever. Like wrestling fans will remember things about wrestling more than they will even about their own, their own lives. I think sometimes, just, and uh, you know, people do not forget things. And, and uh, <clears throat> that's, that's part of the fun of being a fan. I think we still don't know who was behind GTV. No, Still, still waiting for that one. One day, one day. I, I'd like to think it. I'd like to think it was the uh, the little cabal of gods you have in Lucha. That could have been. Yeah. Could be. Maybe season <laughs> five. We'll, we'll go back and explain. That's that. what the G stands for. Well, <laughs> we'll go back and Aerostar will tra- travel back in time. <laughs> we'll see. It was him, and you'll just see Sean Morley in a in a restroom. Like they call you the Big Show. And Aerostar, Aerostar just pops in. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, it seems like an appropriate time to mention uh, a show that happened right in this neighborhood. Uh, our own little Boyle Heights here in Beachview. Uh, Lucha Fiesta. It was right across the street. It is available on Fight TV featuring uh, CML stars uh, like Sam Adonis and Caristico and Shocker, Ultimo Dragon, Bull James. Uh, they used to be on NXT, and uh, he's around. I don't know what else he's been. Is, didn't he pop up in New Japan or something recently as well? I'm not sure. I don't I, watch I still believe this is his hat that was left here in the studio. Uh, but uh, it, it belongs to Shawn Michaels now. And so much more uh, featured on there. That's where I discovered Mojo McQueen. Holy shit. You go check him out if you haven't yet. Uh, but that's available. Look for F- Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. This was one of the first stops that ended up being the uh, the Japanese tour. If you you see the uh, Lucha Lucha Fiesta Japan, I think they did about like six dates over there. I've been seeing pics come up of uh, Ultimo Dragon and uh, Sam Adonis. Sam Adonis really likes to take uh, uh, Dragon's uh, mask like every match apparently. Uh, so if you want to go see that, go look up Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh over on Fight TV and support um, Lucha Wrestling. Guys, it's time to find out what did you learn from pro wrestling this week? Mike? Oh, I learned a lot about pro wrestling this week. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I'm just I'm going to bullet point a couple of things I learned. One, I learned that Becky Lynch is God. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, understand, two, I understand that's going around. Yeah. Uh, two, I learned that um, a tent is an effective weapon in a ladder match. Mm-hmm. Um, three, I learned that if you can see Kenny Omega live in person, you should go see Kenny Omega live in person. Mm-hmm. You don't know how much longer you're going to be able to do that easily. <laughs> uh, yeah, because that was my first time seeing him and it may very well be my only time ever seeing him. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, I'm entirely fine with that because if you have not seen the Kenny Omega versus Phoenix match, Fucking see it. <laughs> it is worth whatever amount of money you have to pay to watch it. I guarantee it. Guarantee. And the rest of the ma- the rest of the show was good too, but that was a 40 minute match, y'all. It was a 40 minute match and it was tremendous. And, and I also learned that I get freaked out when sentient demon dolls follow me on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah, that'd be weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Chris, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Hmm. Um, I learned, uh, one, uh, that Kaya and Johnny Mundo throw one hell of a shark themed dog birthday party. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> we got to parse that for a minute. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> a shark themed so, 
dog. Mm. The birthday party is for the dog that was themed in sharks. Yes, yes. And uh, it was it was amazing. Uh, Johnny and Ty's dog, Prince Presley, he turned two and he had a uh, he had they had a shark themed dog birthday party where dogs could take their picture inside of a giant shark mouth that was held by two Johnny Mundo cutouts. There was a <laughs> pool of beer. There was, uh, there was, <laughs> uh, there, all the dogs were in shark costumes. There was, yeah, there were sharks everywhere. Uh, yeah, it was, it was absolutely amazing. And the beautiful Brenda was there and that really can make a, a, a party, you know? That is amazing. Are there? Yep. That's, that's one of them. And if you get a chance, See and Helical from AAA do a double moonsault. There's a video out there somewhere. Find it. I know, like, Lucha Wait, Bob and, had it. It's and Helical? Cal. Cal. K A L. Oh, I thought you said Angela Cow. I'm like, is no, there a no. cow wearing Angelico's mask somewhere? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him. He does a double moonsault to the outside, and it's insane. So, yeah, if you get a chance, look that. Look for that because it's really cool. Uh, those are probably the two things. And oh, the third thing I learned is that I'm going to uh, take over on on Saturday. So yes. those are my three things I learned. Jeez. Wow, I don't know if any oh, of us can follow that up. You're not going to beat dog themed shark birthday parties no. in the Ty and Johnny show. It was the most extravagant dog themed shark birthday party I've ever been to. <laughs> um. I can't beat that. Uh, I'm just going to go with it. So I, I filmed a, a, for the first time a, an all-women's show this weekend um, instead of watching uh, David Arquette jump off of things, apparently. That's okay. I got to edit it, so I got to see it. Um, and uh, Casey Spinelli, who I believe is making waves on Impact, uh, huge fan. Saw her for the first time ever. Um, ever. Like I, I may have sort of seen a match on Impact with her. I don't know. Um, but she... Um, like they did a promo with her she was taking on kelly klein so it was cool because it was kind of an impact wrestling versus ring of honor thing and i haven't seen kelly klein i'm pretty sure since she became kelly klein in person uh yeah no probably um and uh so it was good to see her again and uh and uh casey was uh, a, a crowd favorite um like one of those that like Mike, I know you don't go to too many indie shows, but you don't know, like how there's like always those couple of wrestlers that kind of make the vibe of the thing, like whether it be the promo and at intermission and everything. Oh, yeah. um, like I, you know, everybody was chanting two scoops from the beginning of the show and, and, okay. and I couldn't figure out who they were for. And it was for her. Um, she had some Canadian and British belt that she defended both of them in the match um it, you know she just it was just like a good vibe like she was the one again this is kind of a newer promotion that's trying to get over and uh she's the one who gets in the ring and says hey if you hashtag women's wrestling hashtag angel gate tag me i'll follow you on twitter you know kind of thing with the fans just trying to get it kind of going because you know it wasn't a it's not really a big room they were having this in not a huge crowd uh but really good for the venue um so that was just our it was a really cool vibe to see and she really sold me on that the match everything so now I follow everything <laughs> that she has out there. So go check her out if you haven't, or if she's on a local show. And apparently, I guess she's on Impact as well. Uh, look her up and, and and check it out. I don't think you're going to be disappointed for that. So, um, oh, and uh, before we get to what the chat room learned, Bobby Bobby's asked this several times. Uh, Chris, he wants to know if Brett's grandmother will be in a potential Lucha Underground season five. <laughs> Probably not, but yeah, you never know. Brett's grandmother could show up on Big Brother again. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. We just need to get you and Bobby together to talk about like, Big Brother at some point. <laughs> so, <laughs> if he ever starts that Big Brother podcast he's been talking about for like 10 years, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, Bobby can hire me to be his grandmother if he wants. To <laughs> if, any, <laughs> if anybody needs a grandmother for birthday parties and bar mitzvahs or just to get that senior <laughs> discount, call Krista Joseph. Yes, if you want a grandmother to insult you all the time, uh, yeah, that's it. That's what I do. Ah, uh, just like a real grandmother. All right. Yeah, grandmother also does dog themed shark birthday parties. Jeez. No, I don't. Ty and Johnny do. No, no, no. Well, I switched it. I said dog themed shark birthday parties. Oh, oh. Like shark, like you, get, you get a picture of a baby shark inside the head of a giant dog. I love that. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Pretty sure Vinny Massaro was uh, was behind GTV somewhere somehow. Uh, oh. G, stand, G stands for good pizza. 
Uh, uh, I like it. I like it. Tina, you know what? Because GTV always delivered. Oh, Ford. it delivered. Tina says that uh, she uh, she's learned that Johnny Mundo versus Becky Lynch is a match for the Temple Battle of the Gods. Yes, yes, absolutely. I learned that uh, Alex learned that uh, Cars learned that uh, uh, SmackDown Live is now the house that Daniel Bryan built. Wheels, uh, who attended Stan Styles' intergender bonanza out there in uh, Wheeling, I believe, um, which the pictures from it are amazing. Uh, it's the second one that he's done. Uh, he learned that Sue Young is a scary lady, and I love Thunder Rosa. There you go. Aw, October Moon. Yay. Yay. Uh, isn't, she teams with Holodead uh, sometimes, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Holodead, we've seen at RWA several times. She's awesome. Um, and also, her been getting swall with Ray Lynn on Instagram is delightful. Uh, so, <laughs> go check out. Just follow all those people and just be happy about it. Uh, birthday shark, do do do. Uh, Bobby learned that Impractical Joker's show in Pittsburgh. Oh, that at the Impractical Joker's show in Pittsburgh, Q was rocking an Elias shirt, which was amazing. Also, in Roman's absence, certain people were stepping in to fill the void, like Elias, Drew McIntyre. And, of course, Becky Lynch. I think Becky was already on the trajectory, though. Um, and Alex Miller learned he gets to watch David Arquette die because of Nick effing Gage, and it's going to be wonderful. Jeez. Jeez. He actually says wonderful, which I'm not sure if that's a pun or just a typo, but I'll accept it as a pun. Um, do, do, do. I think I think you guys were repeating to try to get him in to be so. BBU, Big Brother Underground. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> Here we go, big. Wow, Chris, um, Chris the Joseph. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, like I guess thanks for having me, guys. I, I love, I love, I love hanging out with you guys and talking wrestling. And I think officially, I don't know if we were at it because you're this. Uh, this is several times on the main Wrestling Mayhem show. So officially, I believe if you weren't before, you were now an official co-host of the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I, I I have to I gotta have, do I have the most appearances of it of, of uh, you know guest appearances at this point or or no? Uh, for somebody that's been employed by a wrestling company, yeah. Well, well wait, wait, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> technically, technically, no. I, I think that. <laughs> I think technically, I hold that crown. Yes, but I don't think. I, yeah, that's that's like an unbreakable record. That's a for, Jerry Rice. It's territory. like it's like the Undertaker's record at this point. I don't think you know. I, I may not have a perfect record, but it's gonna be hard to beat. I mean, yeah. we've had some people on like before they were the WWE guys. Like we had we had Corey Graves on at least three times before he was hired. So I don't know how that factors in. I, it's, but definitely, definitely, you're at least second to bad Mike. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. So. <laughs> oh geez uh but anyways thank you so much where can people uh check out what's going on with you uh, i pretty much just do twitter so yeah follow me at, at christy joseph uh and um yeah watch lucha underground uh if you haven't seen it yet go back watch it all four seasons uh, are available on itunes uh i think some are available on netflix just for a short period of time remaining i don't know how much longer but yeah they're uh, coming off soon check it out and uh, it, 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 last month yeah, you guys will you'll see me around, and uh, hopefully there's more lucha to come. There you go. There I can be go. back on this show talking about it. But <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Always, Absolutely. always a pleasure. Uh, Mad Mike is Mad Mike four eight three on the Twitter. I don't know what he's going to do without Lucha Underground in the off season. This is where he has to I, fill that void. I don't know what I'm going to do either. Um, I'm not watching Impact. No, yeah, you so tried that last week. That I did tried that. That that was a that was a disaster. Um. I, I may actually catch up on WWE midweek shows like uh like like some two oh five, some mm -hmm. I mean there's NXT UK now, which mm -hmm. I sadly have not watched a single episode of yet. I've watched and like I've half of an episode and that's not because it sucked. It's just it's just timeliness. Oh cool. No, I've heard I've heard it's good. I just I've been watching a lot of wrestling lately. Like a lot, a lot of wrestling. So, you know, I, I have to pick my battles. And, of course, at Sorgatron on the tour. Please check out all the great shows, sorgatronmedia.com, including this, our friends at the Pittsburgh Current, uh, the awesome cast, the broadcast podcast, 
uh, and so much more comic book pit. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on over there. Uh, plenty of podcasts uh, happening there. Or Pittsburgh Sports, Pittsburgh Bold Sports, if you're uh, a uh, Pittsburgh expatriate and a big Steelers fan uh, somewhere out there in the country. Uh, thank you so much for us. And also, uh, shout out to Ty Cross, just because he's in the chat room and he's a swell fellow. And Who the fuck is Ty Cross? I don't know. He plays baseball. You sound like Graham <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. It's been a blast. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.